Hello friends, family, and other creatures of the sea, and welcome back to the highest level of StarCraft 2 here, right on the Harshman Cats channel. Today we have a game from the GSL between the current GSL code as champion, the man, the myth, the legend, it is Solar, here in the bottom left, and in the top right, we have uh, Ryung. Yes sir, Ryung indeed. Uh, Ryung, a player that every now and again comes out, has a good performance, and then Kind of goes back into into hiding. You know, he burrows underground again. He crashes some build orders. All the other Terran players respect him a lot um, for his his knowledge, his intellectualism. Um, and then there's sometimes that he can he can use those tricks to uh, to take out players that mechanically are much stronger than him. It seems that one of the main issues that uh, Ryung has is not that his brain isn't working. It's the fact that he's not as mechanically quick as some of the other top players. But uh, I believe that both Maru and Beyond have thanked him before in, in, in interviews uh, as a, a, a pretty serious influence on their play, a uh, serious influence on what build orders they pick. But also just general styles. We often see Maru just... If you watch Ryung games, we see Maru just kind of copy Ryung games, um, but with slightly better execution, with a with just better micro, better, better macro, and better unit movement. Um, so... Yeah, I'm curious to see what Ryung has prepared here for us against Solar. As mentioned, this is from the GSL. Ooh, look at that. He has a, uh, a play here. So this is double marine into a barracks lift looking for an overlord that he's not quite finding yet. Barracks now decided to move back. I guess he just wanted to check this high ground, this particular high ground. Solar moved away from it. He's now going to try to move into this general area. I do believe that you can get high ground vision of that just by standing over here, yeah. So this is not really the greatest position. Solar's looking for a spot where he can hide, but that doesn't quite exist. Double links now making their way across the map. Might get a kill here on the SCVs. We still have a couple of seconds on this command center. As uh, the actual link split might have saved that SCV. Overlord's gonna stay alive. Orbital finishes. And I think both of these links should end up falling here as the reactor finishes up. Third command center on the way in the main base for Ryung. And Solar takes his third. We're heading into a, a, a more normal, I guess. Ooh, never mind. Not more normal at all. More normal mid-game is what I was going to say. But we have a second factory coming out here relatively quickly. Could be for a couple of things. But that it is mech seems to me quite certain, given that we're watching Ryung play. Ryung is a player that likes mech. And if you see a second factory, then usually it's mech for Ryung. There are players that love doing these like Blue Flame Hellion builds. Uh, someone that used to do that quite a bit back in the day is Hero Marine. He'd almost always played against like Saro or Raynor, the Zergs that are quite a bit better than him. And he'd open up with like 18 Blue Flame Hellions and then still in eventually transition into Bio. Um, but it feels to me like Ryung is the type of player that, you know, if he starts with a mech opener, he goes into mech. And indeed, that's going to be the case. As a third command center also gets thrown down, the question, of course, is going to be. What is this factory going to be used for? Is it going to be for the uh, Hurricane Thrusters? Or will it be for the Blue Flame? It's going to be the Hurricane Thrusters here. That's, uh, that's the move speed upgrade for the Cyclone. Third gas already being researched. This could be an important scout here for Solar. Is he going to get it? Not really. If Solar spots that third gas here, the timing of that, I think is highly suspicious. It is too late for a second gas, and it's too early for a regular third gas. So that pretty much leads you to the conclusion of this being a mech build, just purely based on the gas timing. So far, Ryung's play has just been very kind of centered around denying any type of scouting, and he's been doing a pretty decent job at it. He really has been doing a pretty decent job at it, because Solar has almost no info. He's been trying to sacrifice a couple of links. Now we see a Roach Worm being thrown down. We have more and more Queens on the way, so the Queen count's going up to 9 right now. So we have a uh, second and a third gas as well here being, uh, being constructed. Creep Tumor being attacked by the Queens. As another Ling is trying to make something happen, Blind Spore at at least one of the bases now two of the bases yeah two out of three bases have a blind spore so that does cost a little bit of money and it sucks because you're playing against someone that isn't really getting a starport altogether aliens just roaming around these are low hellion numbers i think solar knows what ryung is capable of and we're seeing a counter to the player not a counter to the build that he's playing against currently because solar he's just kind of blindly building roaches here and yeah, he's getting a fourth base 
He's, he's he's playing this very safe, like there's a decent possibility of this being mech, as uh, really another Ling is gonna get the knight. As this timing is gonna hit quite strong. 52 workers here for Ryung, 5 Cyclones, 7 Hellions. Armory is about to finish up as well, as the Hurricane Thrusters have finished. Uh, we're gonna move up this ramp, but moving up a ramp with Cyclones really does suck majority of the time. I'd love to see a scan here just to clear some of these creep tumors, but also at the same time get some high ground vision here. Of course, that's uh, killing two birds with the one and the same stone. As more Cyclones are now uh, just kind of chilling at home, not really doing a whole lot. Doesn't seem like Ryung is in a hurry here. You know, there's some players that play this type of mech style and then make sure to rally everything across the map. But Ryung actually playing this almost as if it's bio. You know, just keeping units at home, making sure runbys can't hurt him. There's no tanks quite yet, but once the first tank pops out, these runbys are going to be much less of an issue. We have two more factories popping out, plus one vehicle weapons being researched as well. And I just love the way that Ryung is playing this. Can I just say that? Yeah, I can. Because I love the way that he's playing this. Blue Flame is about to finish up as well. We kind of have a split here. That's going to make it really difficult for um, Solar to set, any, set up any type of run buys like, whatsoever. Because there's only two viable paths. One through the middle, which is covered by the Watchtower. And one through the far left side. I think Ryong is probably trying to take out a base that isn't there yet. It's 70 workers versus 70 workers. Solar playing this very conservative. Very, very conservative. And this is this is a highly technical game right now, at this moment. It's, it's, it's a lot about the movement of the units. Solar has been trying to get Ling run by Zin. He's been trying to make plays. And Ryung has just been shutting everything down with his unit positioning. With his pretty standard setup. His, his solid standard setup. Rotors now try to move on the map. It will be pushed away again as the Cyclone count is relatively high at 12. 21 Roaches here. Uh, Hellions are going to find these... Roaches, and that means that the uh, the hurricane thrusted cyclones will need to rotate over towards that side of the map to deal with the threat. Tanks in the third will uh, should be capable of holding this. Spire on the way. That could be for a quick broodlord rush. It could also be for no. It actually can only just be for broodlord. It doesn't necessarily need to be a quick rush though. It can also just be broodlord later on. Aliens here not gonna get a single shell off quite yet. Upgrades relatively late. Look at the focus here for Solar. It's mainly been on tech. Infestation pit before Evo Chambers is really rushing into those Vipers. We're going to get the a, maybe like a 920 Viper timing here, which is going to be quite fast. Roaches try to make their way across the map. Will not be successful as there's those uh, Cyclones as well as a tank. And even eventually a planetary is going to pop off here. That means that more likely these roaches are just going to end up falling. At least three, three of them will go down practically instantly. Solar wants to do something, but I'm not sure if he can do something. He's going to get a bunch of Banelings. He's building Corruptors, which really doesn't make any sense in this situation, unless he's really afraid of also Liberators. But we don't even have a Starport yet. Three more factories now coming out, plus the vehicle weapon starts as well. Ryang has found a way to professionally kill this game. He's an assassin of good Starcraft. <laughs> the game is about to get interesting. Ryung's here to kill it. <laughs> he shoots it with his boring. And <laughs> well, we're gonna get a bit of an attack here. So far, uh, the camping has worked out for our Terran player. Although we could also say that it has worked out for our Zerg player, right? Zerg is still alive. It's better eco, if anything. Um, like nine gases, ten from the way. Very quick tech. Uh, the only thing that really confuses me are these corruptors. I, I think. Solar currently also is confused by his own call of making Corruptors. He's looking at those Corruptors, thinking to himself, why did I do that again? I feel like there was a plan behind it. This sometimes happens with me as well. I suddenly have it when I'm walking on the street and I go somewhere. And I can't remember what I was doing there. Then you come home, you remember you have a letter in your in your backpack that you had to post. Like, ah, right. That's why I went outside. And then it just stay in front of my PC playing StarCraft all day. You have to walk back again. God, I freaking hate delivering, delivering letters into the mailbox. It's actually mental. The mill was like eight minute walk away from me. That's the closest mailbox. That is that is legit criminal. There should be a mailbox on every street corner in case I want to send some snail mail to someone. I also never want to send snail mail to anyone. I'm always forced into doing it by companies that are too dumb to use uh, virtual systems. I remember being shocked a couple of years ago when I heard that most Americans do their taxes on paper. If I had to fill in anything for my taxes, I think I'd end myself. Holy crap. 
having to, to mail it as well to the tax agent. First of all, they wouldn't be capable of reading it. You save so many taxpayers dollars by just making it all digital. It's because you can always read every font. Unless people start entering their tech stuff in comics on. I can still read that. Or Wingdings. That's the one with the... With the what do you call that? They're not characters. Little pictures. The pictograms? Is that what you call them? The Wingding font. I remember I thought it was really funny. So I once wrote a high school essay in Wingdings. And I got a 1 for it. Which is the lowest grade. I thought it was a good practical joke. Nah, I was 30, what did I know about the practical joke? Ooh, there's an interesting push here, as the Brutalers are going to be moving in forward. Really not that many Vikings either, just a single Viper for anti-air does. These tanks are uh, being well, tactically uh, well, taken care of. It felt like there was a plan here for Ryung with the tank split. You know, one tank over here, one over here, and then they all just ended up dying without doing anything, so... Because it is what it is sometimes in life. We see Solar continuing to push here, and uh, that looks exciting, but I, there are four Vikings. This this doesn't feel like a very well thought out play. And at the same time, Ryung is breaking the rocks on the left side. He's going for like a semi-ish base trade. Now, I kind of like this play. I, I really kind of do like this play. We have some tanks here now sieging up. Good splits on them as well. Cyclone should be capable of at least taking out this base. Viking still chasing. I'm surprised how slow Ryung took it with those Vikings. He could have really been fighting there for, for a while. That's what it feels like to me. Tanks now jumping into action. Blinding clouds coming down on top of the tanks. Do we get good splits on the Cyclones? Honestly, yes. Yeah, we really do. And this, this army looks scary. This army looks very scary. There really isn't a whole lot here for Solar. Ryung managed to pretty much max out on 2 on upgrades. He's unseaged at this point and he's destroying his opponent. Solar should not be fighting this. Solar is, is getting tricked here by looking at his supply in the top right. He's like, oh, I have a lot of supply, but like 90% of the supply right now is still in production. You don't actually have that supply. So he thought he could fight, but he absolutely couldn't. Uh, there's still 6k in the bank. Does he have the larva available? He's only 5 larva right now. And he's going to try to to win this fight. I'm not so sure if he's gonna win this fight. He's gonna push this back at least uh, for a little bit as these tanks will get double wild as the Cyclones get uh, sent back home. Overall resources lost very close to the fight. It's not that bad for Solar. Uh, we still have some Vikings flying around. Oh my god, he's gonna kill all the Overlords. The freaking Overlord sniper over here. Here we go. Seven have fallen already. A couple more here are going down. I love this move because these Vikings are not going to be that useful anymore. But taking out this many Overlords is actually really freaking expensive. Look at that. That is 13 Overlords that have fallen total in this game. And just like eight or nine in the, in the past few seconds. Hello, kill this one, maybe? No, Ryung didn't want a micro anymore. He was done with micro as a concept. Liberators now being added into the composition as the next air unit. The next cool thing. Not a single ghost, though, being produced. That is um, surprising, because I feel like that's one of the things we very often see in this matchup when we have mech against Zerg, is that eventually ghosts are being added into the mix, and I feel like that is kind of the, the missing puzzle piece here. Although Ryung perhaps believes that his puzzle is complete. I definitely see some uh, something missing. I mean, the complete lack of ghost is... Uh, I think it's a mistake. We also don't have a raven yet. Like the day we see a raven in in Terran mecking, like in this type of late game, oh yeah, that is the day I'm actually gonna explode. It will make me so happy. You guys have no clue. Ooh, he has a tech lab here actually. God, I'm glad I said I didn't say I'm gonna shave my head or something because I don't want to do that. It's also gonna get ghost. Look at that. We're young right now, complaining to the puzzle salesman that some pieces were missing. Puzzle salesman, like, no, I just built a ghost academy. Look at that. It will be just fine, buddy. I haven't made a good physical puzzle in a while either. My parents freaking love doing puzzles. It's so nice when there are people that like doing puzzles. Because it's really easy to give gifts to them. Because you can just give a puzzle. And they love it. It's like, oh my god. That's like freaking worth 12 hours of entertainment, you know? And you get a good puzzle. And you get the 2,000 pieces, 5,000 pieces, 10,000, like however many pieces. My parents are good puzzlers as well. Yeah, absolute uh, mental puzzlers. Yeah. 
Oh, here we go. That's why you should always befriend people that make them, them puzzles. It's an easy gift giving. And they're usually good people as well. I think my parents are good people. These are the only puzzle makers that I know. All right. Um, we have no raven yet, but we do have Thors. We have some Vikings. Oh, we're going to get a raven. You know how happy this makes me? Is this cloak for banshees? No. It's cloak for a ghost. It's so... Like, the raven is so good. I just can't get over the fact that the raven is only two supply. And I can't get over the fact that Terrans don't build the raven. Like, these are, these are two facts that absolutely do not compute. The Raven is so, so good. Like, the anti-armor missile is probably one of the most powerful spells in the entire game that almost never gets used. It, it, it's just one of these crazy things in life that you don't, you know, you don't understand. Ooh, here we go. Big blinding cloud's gonna get cast on these tanks. As a couple of tanks are... Uh, out of business, at least for now. Still not a bad fight, though, for Ryung, as long as he doesn't lose his... He does lose the orbital. Even now, it wasn't that bad of a fight. Overall, resources lost still in favor of our Terran player. And for Terran on this map, really what you gotta be looking at are these two bases. So you got this bad boy, and you got this bad boy. Okay? And if at any point the Zerg starts mining from these bases, that's when you gotta start jumping into action. But before that, you're just kind of chilling. You really are just kind of chilling. Uh, this is an interesting fight here. Uh, it feels like it's quite good for Solar, but Solar probably feels the need to commit right now, and I think that might be a mistake. You can't really do that. Onto armor hits uh, three of these Ravagers, as a snipe's gonna take out one of them Ravagers. Four more ghosts on the way. It's the Raven just kind of flying around here with the rest of the force. You love to see it. And this is this is the most important thing here. You know what I've been seeing that Terrence has been doing more? It's just building planetaries in random locations that don't matter, and I'm there for it. Like every every day of the week, I'm there for it. Like a planetary in this spot, you know, and then another planetary over here, and then another planetary back there. He's like triple planetary in a position. It makes it so difficult for Zerg to efficiently engage into that. Almost impossible for Zerg to efficiently engage into that. Like a planetary is basically like an investment into the future because you know, uh, you're you're it's gonna pay off. It's not like banelings are gonna go into it, and that's a good trade for the planetary, you know. So if you have money, you can just start building planetary banks around the map. Really, it it, it can't you really can't go wrong with planetaries. Planetaries randomly sprawled around the map are the index funds of StarCraft 2. No one wants to do it, and everyone knows that it works very well, you know? They always think there's better tricks. Oh, maybe I could have a better, more efficient trades. Like, why don't you just build five planetaries here? You get guaranteed good trades. As we say that, on the left side, we see uh, Solar moving in here. Planetary is going to get taken out. Probably a good trade here for Ryung, as a result of that planetary being there. Tanks weren't really in position. He has a very high cyclone count still, by the way, which is um, weird. Yeah, that is just weird. There's, there's really nothing else to call that, but just weird. It's, it's rare to see that. Uh, the tank count, honestly, extremely low at only nine, making it difficult for him kind of to go from the far right to to the very top with, with, that, with that tank spread. I mean... Imagine you have two tanks here, you want a tank over here, maybe a tank over here, a couple of tanks down here. Like, this base is absolutely unrealistic right now. And I'm not sure what Rion is thinking on that right side, but he cannot take that base currently. This orbital is going to get lifted, uh, Solar tries to push in here. Resources lost, still within 7k range of one another. 18 workers went down. That's actually a lot of workers. I think Solar here still believes that he can not necessarily outmine his opponent, but I think Solar believes he can kill his opponent. If you kill workers two, three more times, and then you take out a base, there's not enough mining for Ryung to really max out. Even now, he's struggling staying on the same army supply as his opponent. Like, Ryung is not maxed out, but same army supply still. Here we go, attack from the left side, attack from the right side. Lots of Cyclones in the middle. This was an okay trade here for Ryung, at least that's what it feels like. Yeah, I think they went up like 2k or so for him. Um, this command center is still just flying there. I feel like this is more of a scouting command center than anything. It's like making sure that there's no hatchery being built there. I'd be thoroughly disappointed in Ryung 
if he decides to really try and establish this base with a planetary. I actually think it will be a pretty big blunder. I don't think that's what you want. If you use this base as a bait, however, that's something that I would absolutely love. As um, we're seeing a lot of units here moving in. Ghost actually being caught. Can we get an anti-armor missile? No, we can't, apparently. As uh, Tank's doing a good job. Holy crap. 36 to 45. I think overall this trade was good for Ryang in the, in the context of the units lost. But now the question is, was it good in the context of the game that we're watching? Oh my god, that investor had energy. It was ready to go, but it didn't get it. Because if, I mean, if he gets this base, this would be really good, actually. But he did lose quite a bit of supply, so it's always scary. At the same time, we have a couple of links here heading towards the far left side. These links are powerful. They don't have any carapace upgrades, but they are still going to be killing a bunch of these SCVs. This is an orbital command, and it means that pure links can deal with it extremely well. More links being sent towards that far left side. I think Solar realized it was going to get cleaned up at some point, but he wants to continue harassing that general side. What is this? this is a, oh, just a, I thought it was a nuking ghost. It was just a guy that's shooting it. From a distance. It's a wild move here. Here comes perhaps an anti-armor missile. No, once again, the answer is no to anti-armor missiles. And um, it's going to be a cleanup here of a lot of the tanks. Good moves out of Solar. Where the game started out slow, it has now definitely hit a uh, more of a, a, a quick speed. A much higher pace of constant trading. Lots of run buys. Good movement here with the links as well. Solar still maxed out. 120 supply in the army against 97 army supply. Here comes to jump on top of this planetary. This could be an issue here for Ryan. Because this is going to be a relatively important base. More and more of the tanks being taken out as well. As Solar with a, uh, in my mind, relatively convincing fight here on that right side. Is still mining plenty of resources. Would love for him to try and really saturate this base here in the on the top left. I think that's going to be almost vital if he wants to play a serious late game. He has some uh, insane oversaturation anyway, so he might as well try. And Ryang right now, he's he's broke as a joke. We're lacking minerals for well, really both players, but we're really lacking gas for Ryang. He is what? He's mining off of three gases currently. These are all empty, yes. It's, it's really just three gas. Three refineries is all he has. And that's probably not enough. He's going to need to get up to five at least. And I think Solar may be focusing a bit too hard here on the right. I'd love for him to try and do something on this left side of the map. As a bunch of roaches are now moving in. But I'm more thinking with really a major portion of his army is going in there. With uh, like Ling, Bane, Roach, Ravager. Just basically everything that's here. And trying to burst this area. Because everything right now is in position on the far right. There's no planetary. If this position gets given up and there's no planetary. A couple of links can actually deal with it. So I think the... The balance of the army, the weight, is too much on that far right side, at least for Solar. I think Ryang is doing that much better here. At least he's, max he's matching his opponent, which is exactly what you want to be doing. We have another command center being thrown down. That's going to be a planetary at some point. Mules raining down from the sky. Don't forget, we don't have that much gas. Here comes an attack. Right into a lot of tanks. And this tank line, it, it goes back a bit further than Solar perhaps would have would have wanted it to. Solar's gonna continue fighting into it. Hits a bunch of Ravager Bells, but doesn't hit the double. <laughs> at the same time, a Roach attack moving through a planetary is actually gonna get pushed back. At the same time, the Cyclones kill the far left side. Solar falling in the resources lost, as well as just losing a bunch of his bases and did not kill this. This is an orbital which can just be lifted. Functioning more as bait than as anything else. These Hellbats are going to try and get some decent trades against the Lynx. We'll not quite get that. But have taken out at least one base on the left side. 30 workers going down as well. And the income for Solar absolutely um, falling through the, the floor here. Just like gone out of our sights. It's actually Ryung that has the superior economy. He has better gas income. He has better mineral income. And he also managed to actually make a rotation towards the correct side of the map, exactly where he needs to be currently, as uh, the Raven in this army, by the way, has stayed alive this entire game. Could we just could just focus on that a little bit? Terran's always telling me it's so hard to keep that Raven alive. It's been in the same control group as everything else, and has stayed alive for literally the entire game. Gonna see perhaps another anti-armor missile here. Can we see it? Okay, now we're gonna get that parasitic bomb that most likely is gonna kill this Raven, as poof, it indeed explodes. But that was a raven that was alive for about 8-9 minutes. It, I'm not even sure if it was separately controlled majority of the time. I don't think so. As, um, Solar in a world of trouble. Solar in a world of trouble over here. He does not 
have the units that he needs. He is down in supply. He's down in army supply. He is currently being outmined in gas. Although that might be a decision more than anything. I mean, Solar definitely could start mining a bit more from this particular gas. The real problem here is that Solar is not taking any of his opponent's bases. And that is an actual issue. Three more ghosts coming out as well. I once again would love to see a raven being produced. I mean, we have this starport here. It's, uh, you know, you're only one click away here, Mr. Raven. For now, staying in that, uh, in that little starport. Single tank, Viking, sensor tower. A couple more tanks in the back. Not that many, though. I'd love to see just two, three helpets being added in as well. So Hellion run by now, tries to come in. We'll uh, get caught here by the well, majority of the units. I think this is a prime opportunity for Ryang to now move in forward with like five Cyclones, three Hellions and kill this base. That's what I would say. At least, that's what I would think. Maybe I'm thinking wrong here. Six uh, Corruptors on the way. Solar perhaps wanting to transition back into Brute Lord. The problem is that there's a, a Thor out, as well as a bunch of uh, Ghosts. And really, uh, th that is a serious issue. Oh, here we go. That's a nice scan, by the way. That's a very nice scan indeed. This orbital almost gets taken out. And this is the Cyclone uh, the push I was talking about. A couple of Cyclones, a couple of Hellbats. Nice split off. Um, it's not even necessarily going to kill this base, but it's going to kill a lot of workers here. Now we can start moving back. And that should actually kind of do the trick here. Yeah, that absolutely should. Sensor Tower is being helpful. Uh, Ryung has his entire army, I think, uh, a bit too far back at the same time. Another Hellion run by coming in as Solar is just not ready with any type of army split. It's taking some serious damage. 20 workers going down in the past 30 seconds. Uh, he's going to lose actually a couple more workers if he isn't careful. And maybe some of these links also. Like This is such an efficient trade here. Holy crap. Not even funny how efficient that was. It's Ryung just moving back and forth. Is now going to go for the kill on this base. Rather than just taking out all these drones. New Raven on the way as well. We have more Vikings popping out. I feel like the transition has been spotted. As the Corruptors have been seen. And yeah, these Brutes will not be capable of achieving anything here at all. Ship Ovens level 2 has uh, finished. Level 3 hasn't even started yet. Upgrades for the Ghost are still only at 2-1 as well. That is somewhat surprising. The air weapons though for, uh, for Solar are practically non-existent. So that's also not quite great. Solar now trying to move towards the the top left, I guess. More Cyclones. This is a huge army, holy crap. 20 Cyclones, 7 tanks, 5 Vikings, 14 Hellbats. And 11 Ghosts as well. Command center going down at home. More and more CCs honestly coming up. And I think Ryung pretty much realized that his trades have been good enough that he can just start sitting back completely again. It's like, hey, I don't actually need to attack into you ever. You could just attack into me and I can take a couple of mediocre fights and still be fine. Mediocre fight being uh, like a small loss here for Ryung. I think this type of cyclone attack at this point almost feels more risky than what it could achieve, but... Maybe he just wants to take out some of that gas mining from that base. It's still going on. I mean, there's a lot of gas in here. Maybe not the worst decision to make. I feel like Solar is lacking some serious gas. As, uh, Cyclones are going to get surrounded by these links. Albert's are a bit out of position there. At the same time, we have a move in forward. Raven, perhaps, with the anti-armor can do something. Does have the scan available. Does see these investors coming in as well. As really... Uh, it feels like there's almost nothing that, that Solar can do against this army. He's trying to move him forward, but it's just not quite there. And I, I think Ryung just wins. And this wasn't a close fight either. Look at that. Absolute destruction here in the end as Ryung takes out the GSL champion in this game. Beautiful stuff out of Ryung. Nice mech play. I love seeing everything utilized. You know, the Raven, the Ghost... Not a high Thor count, but more on that Viking focus against the Brutes. And I mean, it worked out. Uh, it, it worked absolute wonder. So I'm a fan. That's going to be it for me today. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to like, button, subscribe to the channel. And see all of you next time for a new video. Thank you so much for watching. And bye-bye.